Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're at. This is today's live, our Q&A. This opportunity for you to ask your questions, get some answers, you know, all of the, all of those things. So welcome to our Q&A. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a few things today. Um, but today is January 12th, 2021. Yes, we are in 2021. Your hope, hope is there. <laughs> so welcome to our Q&A. Um, we're going to be talking about, well, health and fitness for the most part. So uh, health and wellness, I should say. Health and wellness for truck drivers. Um, staying healthy, not only physically, but also um, mentally. You know, making sure that we're mentally focused as well as, as physically. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, we're also going to just give heads up on everything else that's going on industry-wide. Um, so we'll talk about that. So if you've already noticed, it's over here. <laughs> if you've already noticed, we have um, an image here. I'm just going to bring that back up. This month is, our, is actually Human Traffic Awareness Month. So for those of you who aren't aware of what human, traffic, human, human trafficking is, here's just a, a, a definition really for you and a heads up. This is creating awareness for, to you and to others out there about what human trafficking is. Um, again, Human Trafficking Awareness Month is January, so we're in the midst of Sorry about all the volumes, you guys. Let me change, let me decrease that for you so it's not so loud. There we go. Um, so exploiting a person through force, fraud, or coercion, uh, sex trafficking, forced labor, and domestic servitude. Happening, it really it happens everywhere. And even in the United States, victims are U.S. citizens. They can be of any nationality, any age, any social economical status or gender and any person under the age of 18 involved in a commercial sex act. Those are all definitions in and of themselves and combined as human trafficking. So um, as this says, no one can do everything. We realize that. We can't not, no one can really do everything about it, but we can be aware of it. Um, we can help each other out. We, there's always something that we can do. And even if it's just creating more awareness for others. And that's what this month is all about. Uh, the Human Trafficking Awareness Month. You notice there's actually quite a, quite a bit of shows out there that, um, that talk about human trafficking or have them embedded in it because it is such a prevalent topic. It's, it's such a topic that's out there. So as a over the road driver or as a truck driver in general, um, you can keep your eyes out for it. You can be the main, the front line of not necessarily defense, but of, of action, the first of taking action. So we appreciate all that you do for that. So we know that we have a lot of gentlemen and ladies, individuals out there that are, are fighting for the human rights and, and against human trafficking. So thank you guys. Just wanted to get that out there. Um, oh, Anna's provided some links. Hey, Amy, check that out. Anna's links are working. Woo -woo. <laughs> hey, Amy. Hey, Anna. Um, so yes, if you want to learn more information, Anna's got some of that the links there for you. So you can check them out and uh, kind of dive into it learn a little bit more about what it is and, and how to help prevent it. So thank you. Appreciate it. So on to the rest of our topic, topics, I should say, for today. Health and fitness. Health and fitness can pretty much be, uh, it's a big old window of, of topics in and of themselves. So in, in between, there's a gazillion of them. So we'll talk a, a lot about them. We'll, we'll focus more on sleep because really sleep is, is probably the biggest aspect. I mean, think of health, health and wellness in general. You've got your mental health of course, and um, if you don't have your mental health, then you struggle with all other areas of life. Um, sleep and mental health kind of go hand in hand together. Um, if you don't, if you're not getting the sleep, uh, you're going to lack the mental health or the mental capacity, cognitive, that you should have. Um, we also have physical fitness, cardiovascular, mobility. Those are all kind of lumped together. 
and um, of course weight loss nutrition and weight loss um, the weight loss can kind of go under the exercise as well as or the physical activity as well as um, the nutrition but nutrition is going to be the most important when it comes to uh, weight loss if that's if that's your goal if that's what you're learning so we'll dive into a little bit of that throughout the month of January uh, we're going to focus more today like I said on sleep and, and health and mental mental health fitness mental health there we go <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit about that but as always this is a Q&A for you guys so if you have questions um, or concerns suggestions anything like that please go ahead and leave it in the chat and between myself and Anna we will go ahead and and start answering those questions for you as soon as they as soon as we see them coming in um, yes the employee assistance program that Anna's gone ahead and put the link to it when we're talking mental health do know that one of the main one of our um, main programs here at Decker is the EAP the employment assistance program and it's life balance there are a lot of resources available within that life balance resource so please take a look at it uh, see if there's anything that you can utilize and it could be a variety of things from dealing with exhaustion to dealing with teenagers to dealing with newborns to dealing with um, ailing parents or a uh, someone's estate, you know, a family member's estate that you've been responsible for. Uh, there are a lot of stresses out there that can really weigh on our mental health, and that's where that's where this life balance, the EAP program, comes in handy. Um, Amy says, Highway 93 Bitterroot area is blocked. There are many accidents reported. Lookout passes at a standstill due to many semi accidents. Please slow down and be safe. Um, Amy, weather? There bad weather there? I'm assuming. Oh, she says, yes, it's snowing like crazy here. Guess we need to talk fire season more because the snow came. Or <laughs> we don't need to. She and I were talking a little bit. We we really haven't had a lot of snow um, in at least compared to like last year and stuff. So we were talking about how this winter or this winter, this summer is going to be uh, not pleasant. It's going to be very smoky if it doesn't come back, come the snow. So yeah, all right. So welcome, welcome. Yep, another headache with my <laughs> camera. Sorry, you guys. All right, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Like I said, if you have any input, please put them in. Uh, provide it. We'd love to hear from you. Um, see, if we'll, see what we can do. Like I said yesterday, if you joined us on our Facebook Live, um, by the way, we go live on our Facebook channel, which is facebook.com backslash DTLink. We go live every Monday at new, or at 4 p.m. There we go at 4 p.m. Central Time and answer your questions every Monday. Um, every Tuesday we're here on our YouTube channel. Every Tuesday at noon Central, which is why we're here today. <laughs> so again, we're going to talk about mental health, um, health and wellness of of truck divers. And I know there's a lot of aspects, and I don't, you know, no matter who you are, you're probably struggling struggling with one or the other or one or many. Um, so it's kind of hard sometimes to admit that we have these struggles, but it, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, especially when it comes to mental health. If we don't take action, then it, it can kind of just compound and become worse and worse. And we don't, we don't want to do that. Whether it's um, just dealing with getting a better night's sleep um, or even as much as suicide prevention, uh, mental health can be again a wide variety um, but it's it is important and it is a serious topic um, but it's most definitely nothing to be ashamed of I believe it is if I can get my percentages right here five percent of the population the US population um, struggles with mental illnesses um, more specifically anxiety and depression and with the trucking industry, it's even more prevalent. It, you're looking at about 13% just within um, truck drivers alone. So, you know, it's more than doubled, almost tripled the percentage in, in uh, depression. And a lot of that has to do with being out on the road by yourself alone all the time. What's nice is that you have the time to to think about, to think things through, you know, to really process 
your thoughts, your feelings, the situations you've gone through. But in the same sense, you have all that time to process all that information. And sometimes when we process it and reprocess it and reprocess it and can't take action on it because our main duty is driving at the time, then it's, you know, it becomes a major distraction for your driving, for your life, and for whatever it is that you're trying to do. If you're trying to sleep and you have all of those distractions coming through your mind and you just cannot silence them, then uh, you're not going to get the rest that you need. And having proper rest, getting the amount of sleep, like seven to eight hours for most of us. And yes, I know that not everybody needs seven to eight hours. I know that there are some people out there that function very well on fewer. And some of you may get five hours of sleep at night, but then, you know, you're, you're getting another four hours during the day. And that's how you function well. You're still getting enough sleep combined in order to allow your body to recuperate. That's what sleep is for. Sleep is a chance for your body to heal properly. Um, it helps to build your immune system. It helps to repair muscle and aches. And it's just, it's a chance for your body just to repair. Um, and if you're not giving your body that, that chance to repair, you're just gonna keep damaging it over and over. And like I said, it's just gonna be a compound effect. The more um, the more damage that you started with and not allowing it to repair, it's just gonna, it's like putting, it's like a, um, an injury that has scar tissue and the scar tissue keeps building up and keeps building up. It's a bigger problem. It's a bigger problem uh, 10 months from now than it was at the beginning because all the scar tissue has built up and created um, more and more pain. And that's what happens with mental illness, just like any other injury. And that's what happens with your immune system. If you're not taking care of your immune system and getting yourself enough sleep in order for your immune system to repair, it's going to do the same thing. It's just going to have, it's going to become weaker and weaker and weaker and harder to, to fix in the long run. You can't catch up on sleep. <laughs> you know, like you can't sleep one full day, a full 24 hours and think that's going to last you throughout the week. It doesn't work that way. Even if you wanted to, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> We can wish. Um, so let's see. Amy says, I fell asleep watching college football. I didn't realize I was that tired. I, w I wish I could see eight. Yeah, sometimes we're, you know, once your body is finally relaxed and you fall asleep, that's a sign that you need to, to rest. So good point, Amy. You know, that there are a lot of signs out there that you need to rest. If you are reaching for coffee more often, um, I, you know, I get that we all, that a lot of people, have a, a sort of caffeine in the morning, whether it be coffee or tea or maybe even an energy drink. Um, not that I need to tell you what to do, but don't <laughs> you know, avoid as much um, caffeine as possible throughout the rest of the day. I get it at the beginning of your day. Um, try and stick with something that has uh, no sugar added. You know, black coffee is good for you. Teas are, can be good for you. Um, or at least not uh, not detrimental to other areas of your of your health. If you're putting a lot of stuff in your, I, I know I'm sidetracking here, but if you're putting a lot of stuff in your coffees, then it's going to trigger a whole lot more than just your energy level. It's going and it may trigger your energy level and then dip it back down real hard after the crash, basically. But avoid all those extra additives. You know, that, that you put into the coffees to to keep your health down. Um, Amy says, energy drinks aren't good, stay away. I agree, yes indeed, I agree. And that, you know, there's obviously some are gonna be better than others, but um, if you can avoid them, that'd be great. Um, so where was I? Back to um, getting enough sleep and, and knowing knowing those triggers. If you're reaching for a lot of caffeine throughout the whole day, then that's a, a sure fire sign. Um, if you're sluggish, if you're slow to react, if your reactions are slow, someone's coming at you and you're like, oh, oh, yeah, you're you're tired. Let your body rest. Um, if you're rolling down the windows and to get more air, to keep your eyes awake, if you're trying to take in more breath and trying to get yourself excited just so that you can 
get your your body moving a little bit because you're exhausted if you're having to run around the truck to wake yourself up you know that's a sign that you're too tired if you're blaring the radio because you think that the louder music will keep you up more you're gonna need to take a rest it, safety first you guys it and i know that that's hard to to hear sometimes when you're paid by a mile but that's why we have the thousand dollar that's why we have the guaranteed pays we have the minimum pays you know you will not make less than this as long as you're being available for dispatch as long as you are planning your loads enough that you're giving yourself enough time to get there on time and you're not having any late loads you're going to be able to make that minimum payment or your not minimum payment but minimum salary every single week and and not have to worry about it but if you're managing your time and you're getting the sleep you're going to have the energy to drive longer you're going to have the um, cognitive brain power to go further to plan your day better and better every day sleep is important it is in fact like it will snowball if you don't get enough sleep but it is the basis of everything it's the core um, William says hi William he goes uh, I like hot tea with honey it wakes me up I love hot tea with honey um, and honey is great for you in in also fighting your immune system um, teas are good but honey is good for your immune system your immune system if you're in an area that that honey was produced so if you say um, where I live having honey from this area is going to fight off a lot of the uh, a lot of the diseases and I guess keeping my immunity for the area but traveling you know a little bit different Amy says how do you sleep with light how do you sleep with light uh, well, you can always wear one of those little masks, you know, put the little mask on um, to to keep your eyes. And here, that's a good point. So putting the little mask on or, or having something to shield your eyes is... Also, not looking at a computer screen or a TV screen for at least an hour before bed is also a, a good way to help you to sleep better. Um, it'll help keep you asleep longer, it'll help you get to sleep faster, and it'll be a deeper, more REM sleep in addition to that. So if you can prevent the extra lights, the extra distractions, um, a lot of you or use the hum of the reefer units for some of you who are refrigerated that that might wake other people up but for our reefer drivers I bet a lot of you it, that hum is is gonna put you to sleep uh, when you're sitting in the in the sleeper I, I wouldn't doubt that uh, Amy says yep I love honey but it has to come from locals yep Sun is up I'm up oh I see what you're saying Amy says Sun is up yeah good shades I guess good shades I don't like my face touch so so that won't be an option is what you're saying <laughs> sleep mask that's what it is yeah that wouldn't that wouldn't be an option shades really good shades will do it <laughs> exactly so there well, so, seven steps for uh, improving your mental health write in a journal um, take a, a daily journal and make it a gratitude journal. So you're writing all the things that you are thankful for. Now this is more for your mental health than necessarily getting sleep, but it also is helpful at the end of the day. So if you start your day with a gratitude journal, to start you off on the right foot, uh, what are you thankful for? Did you have a good night's sleep? Write that down. That's what you're thankful for. I am thankful for a good night's sleep. I cannot tell you after having a couple of nights sleep that are not having a couple of good night's sleeps, how having a good night's sleep is one of the top things on my gratitude journal in the morning. I mean, that is priority. When I have a good night's sleep, that sucker is going up because I feel great. I feel energized. And that's really starting my day off right. A good night's sleep will, in fact, do it. So a gratitude journal, write little things. You know, I received a smile or I got a, I got to talk to Anna today or whatever it was. You know, that, that made my day. That 
that's something I was thankful for. Um, ta list three things in your personal life, three things in your professional life, you know, just to get you started. Because honestly, if you gave yourself 10 minutes, just give yourself 10 minutes to write in a gratitude journal, I'm betting that you can get a couple of pages. It's really not hard. Once you get going, you realize all the things that you are thankful for. But if you don't write them down and you don't name them, you don't really think about things you're grateful for. You stew on things that frustrate you or upset you instead. We want to focus more on the positive than the negative. Positive can be just as contagious as negative. We just need to put it out there more. We're not putting it out there as much as we put out negative. Amy says, I've got black shades, but it seems like once I move the body, it stays in motion. Well, fairly, yeah, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Not everybody's that way, but I, I know you're right. Uh, Amy says, I slept best last night, but I need more. You know, and when you have an injury, speaking of Amy, um, when you have an injury, and that is preventing you from getting a good night's sleep, then that means that you need to go get it looked at. Now, in her case, she is, she's getting treatment for it, but at the same time, um, some, and it's gonna take a while, which is frustrating, but if you don't get it looked at, again, it takes longer and longer to heal. So. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about that. Anna says, I'm always the one talking to and asking Jesse for wisdom. It goes both ways for sure, most definitely. Uh, but stay positive, look on the bright side and that gratitude journal will help you to stay there and not only stay there, keep you there, keep you there longer, but it'll help you share that with other people as well. And plan your day while you're sitting there doing your gratitude journal, plan your day. Uh, a lot of you like to plan the day, the your day the night before which, or the day before depending on when you're going to bed and that's fine as it, and sometimes that might even be better personally i like to plan the day before because then i can sleep without thinking about it my i went like this because this, this is my planner my daily planner i like to just brain dump everything that i have to do for the day um i start on sunday and i i go through everything for the week and then the night before, I'll brain dump everything, write everything that I need to get done, um, what's important, what's urgent, what needs to get done, but not necessarily tomorrow, and uh, what I can have somebody else do. You know, I can uh, delegate to somebody else, or I just need to take off my list. It's not going to get done. It doesn't need to get done. Why do I even have it there? Am I trying to be someone I'm not? You know, those things just need to come off the list but prioritize. So that's where my quadrant is. Um, you guys know Todd Herman, you know that there was a lot of people that teach this at this point, but you've got your quadrant, you've got the needs to be done, it's important, and it's urgent, and you've got the it's urgent, or it's not important, not important at this very moment at least, and you've got it's not important, it's not urgent, get rid of that. And then you've got it's important, but it's not urgent, or it's urgent, but it's not important to you. So that usually means that you can delegate to somebody. Um, but so I've got my different quadrants and with those, once I brain dump and I put those into the right quadrants, I'll know how I need to schedule my day and I get it planned out. I plan it out the night before so I can rest with ease. If there's something that I don't want to, or I don't want to forget, um, I need to make an appointment, I write that down. Otherwise, I, I'm going to lose it if you're more likely to remember it, if you write it down, plus you have a reference, you wrote it down, you can reread it, which is fantastic. But write it down, plan your day ahead. Um, and then personally, when I wake up in the morning and I'm reviewing my plan for the day, um, I'm going through it and it's, I'm still, you know, you could consider it planning the day, but I've already planned. I'm just kind of reviewing, pacing myself for it. I know where I'm gonna start, and as soon as I'm done with project A, which A would be once I'm done with my workout, I know, okay, so this is where my, this is what I'm doing next. So as soon as I'm done with my workout, I have another to do with. So that just keeps me going, it, instead of sitting down and taking a break. I, are you guys like this? Okay, so Amy, this reminded me when you said you fell asleep at um, watching football last night, but how many of you will be just go, go, go. You're, you're working hard. You're doing your thing. Um, whatever it is. 
And then you sit down for a second just to take a breath. Just put your feet up for just a moment. Um, get a drink of water, you know, maybe sit down and eat. And once you've done that, how many of you are done for the night? If you eat and you take a drink of water, how many of you are done? You're like, eh, I don't have the energy. I'm worn out for the day. We, a lot of us are. I, I, gotta, I gotta admit, I'm guilty. If I don't put it on my calendar and I don't plan for, if once I have dinner, if I don't plan for an activity afterwards, like go for a walk with so-and-so, or go for a walk, go for a hike, uh, go work out, um, do a pre-trip. You know, if, it, if I don't have something planned afterwards, read a book. I'm just going to be a bump on the lock. I'm going to sit back and watch some TV, some Cobra Kai or something. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's how we are. We just, you know, we're done for the day. Our, our mind, my mind will like, I'm done. I'm turning it off. I'm going to relax. But if I've got something planned, if I've got my calendar all up until I go to bed, then things will get done. Amy says, yeah, I know, it's hard not to. I hate appointments, she says. This month alone, I have one every, oh, one every week between Caden and I, at least to get them done, and over the next six months. Yeah, appointments, those can be wearing. They're, those wear on me, too. I'm, I'm not big on them. Um, when it comes to doctor's appointments and stuff like that, I think, oh, it's a lot of work. Got to get over there, got to drive. By the way, MeMD is a great resource for those of you who don't have to go in. Um, obviously, there are some, uh, there are definitely exceptions to who that MeMD can work with, but it, it does cut down with a lot of uh, prescription runs as well as, as well as uh, the doctor's appointments, both um, medical doctors for uh, injuries, for illnesses, uh, mental health as well. There's a variety. She goes, so me, it's go, go, go until I sit down for dinner and then it's slow down. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, I got to clean up. I got to clean up my food. I got to clean up my mess, you know? And if you're trying to take tr pride in your ride and don't clean up your mess, then it just piles back on as well, right? Which creates that, uh, if again, if you're like me, will create that like little, I don't know, little person in my head that's saying, oh, what a mess. It's so overwhelming. You, you should have taken care of it. Oh, but you don't, you don't have the energy. You know, I mean, you need to knock that sucker out and get it done so that you can relax. It's so much easier to relax in a clean space than it is in a dirty space. And whether it's your truck or your home or just the space that you're in. And it could be just your mental space. And that's why I say plan it, brain dump and write everything down so that you know what you need to do and you don't have to store it up here it's not stored up here it just becomes the next you, you know just it just becomes a habit just becomes a process instead of having to remember it just automatically works so plan you know state what you're going to do uh, if you've got goals plan those out write those out and, and plan how you're going to get to those goals meet those goals basically and then take care of yourself and like i said a lot of that it just the being positive and writing a gratitude journal and planning your day out, taking care of yourself, these all go hand in hand together. They work well together. Um, taking care of yourself can keep you positive, can keep your energy up, which can keep you moving for the next day and the next item within the day. Um, but getting enough sleep is part of taking care of yourself. Eating nutritious meals is taking care of yourself. Not overeating. Overeating is going to make you tired and sleepy without the energy. You want to be tired and sleepy three hours after you're done eating so that you can allow your body to wind down naturally and not because of heavy foods. And then get some physical exercise. When you're done eating, go for a walk. Go for a hike. Do a post trip. Whatever, you know, whatever it takes to just get your, your body moving. You've been sitting in a truck. You need to work on your mobility. Start doing some stretches um, to, to feel better. You'll relax easier when it is time to sleep. 
and then start interacting with others. Maybe there's a, another driver at this stop that you're at that wants to go for a hike too. Get to know them, walk together, um, go check in, get to know the person, you know. Um, yes, we've got COVID and we've got all these regulations with um, keeping distance, but that doesn't mean you can't interact with people. You've got social media as well. You've got Facebook, you can be here, you've got your phone, you can go call them. Um, just connecting with others can help reduce your stress. Um, just take a minute to socialize and laugh and smile, giggle, make yourself smile. It, it'll be contagious even to you. You see somebody, they could be having a bad day, throw them a smile. You know, that could be everything for their day. That could make their day. Um, someone does it to you, does it not make your day? Right? Absolutely. Hour drive just to Missoula for appointment and then drive home, Amy says. Kane has nine doctors in Kalispell. Oh, that's a two hour drive, two, two each way. Catch up on emails, message, yep. Don't sleep much. But Anna says, like, COVID safe. And when you hug someone, you get the cuddle hormone, she says. Yeah, she taught me that yesterday. I didn't know that. I thought that was kind of cool. But that's true. You know, it just, it feels good. It feels good internally as well as just receiving it. Listen to some music. Now, I used music as a way to, as kind of a sign for trying to stay awake. But that's when you're cr trying to crank it up because your body is starting to wear down. But if it's because you are wanting to just, you know, to, to stay positive, to, to get that energy. I like to listen to music as I'm going through the first part of my day and going through emails where um, I'm just kind of sorting and getting things prepped. So things are coming in. I'm, I'm an hour behind, um, I'm on mountain time. so. My the rest of my office has gotten things done for an hour before I come in. So I'm starting to process emails when I first come in. Now I leave them with other things because I leave a little bit later. But when I come in, I'm starting to process and get things ready for the day and get them in order so I know where to start. Again, using my, my binder or using my planner and, and getting things going. And so I'm organizing it. But at that point, I like to listen to some music because it just kind of gets me from going to the mundane, moving things back and forth, to, all right, I've got, got music, I am dancing, I am enjoying, and definitely don't have a camera on me at the time so I can relax and, you know, sing if I can, which you can't, but I'll bellow out something, I'm sure. You know, but it, it helps me reach my goal with a little bit more excitement. Whatever that milestone is, I like to celebrate it. Um, I got done with, I got through my emails in five minutes, rock on, that's awesome at the beginning of the day, super awesome. But now it's time to tackle my applications. Now it's time to tackle my pre-trip. Now it's time to, you know, whatever the, the case might be. So mental health, it's important. It's important to your everyday life. It's important to my everyday life. And it's important to your well-being. So start by jotting down three things that are important or that you're thankful for um, in your daily life that you appreciate. Try to have a positive stance and set goals. You know, have something to look forward to. Having something to look forward to also can keep you motivated and positive. And make a plan for the year. Write those goals down, make a plan. Um, try to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep in a night or a day, depending on, like I said, when your rotation is. And start to interact with others mingle whenever possible staying COVID compliant but mingle and and get to know people you've got the meetups that are online you can visit with them um go for a hike you know it doesn't mean that you have to mingle with people necessarily it could be a dog i know a lot of you guys bring a dog on the truck for companionship that's nice amy said yesterday that she's trying to get steven to do it you know it all depends uh, NSDQ 160 snow chains and load locks can become hey very good gym replacement hey that's not a bad idea yeah those snow chains that's uh what is that 75 pounds how much do those weigh 
Uh, no, Amy says, is oxytocin the drug they give you when you have babies? If so, what? That's uh, Pitocin. That's Pitocin. <laughs> Be happy. Give it a drip, babe. Uh, Pitocin to... Well, I don't know. I know what you're talking about. Um, I don't know what that other one is called. <laughs> yep, snow chains and load locks. That, that's right. Could be a very good gym. Plus, you have the step. Um, doing a step lunge. Can't see my foot, but I was totally doing that. Um, step lunge onto the step and then rotate to the other leg. I didn't realize my legs were stiff until I started doing that. <laughs> squats, air squats. You don't have to have weights to start feeling some great uh, resistance. Doing squats, a deeper stop, squat, um, holding it for a long period of time. Planks are one of the best exercises you can do for your body. Holding yourself in a plank position. Um, and then, you know, mobility exercises are fantastic. Doing the right stretches, doing the right rotations. Um, I gotta do both sides. If I do one as an example, I gotta do both sides so they're even. <laughs> Anybody else that way? <laughs> so yeah, those are all, all things that you can do to, to keep your body healthy, keep your body moving. Um, you guys are, a lot of you are mentally exhausted by the time the day is done. You've got long periods of driving. You've got some heavy traffic that you're dealing with. Congestion, you know, traffic congestion on some of these major highways, like uh, Amy was saying on 93 right now. That can be stressful. And so, you know, sometimes we need to find a hobby to reduce that stress. Um, it, your hobby could be exercising. Your hobby could be a lot of things, but, um, I know a lot of you guys like to do, like to uh, play on the machines, yamble a little bit, um, get up and move around. If you're gonna do that, uh, make sure that you get up and move around every one now. Because you're sitting there a lot of the times gambling, but then you're also sitting while you're driving and you need your body to move. So try and move. Little movements are good too, you know. You can get up and walk around the uh, facility and then come back and play another, whatever, you know, try and try and find something that helps reduce that stress. It's vital to get enough sleep at each night. That's, that's for sure. Um, so get them, get enough sleep, physical exercise, cardiovascular health, um, stretches for your mobility or for injury prevention. Injury prevention can be a big one. Having the right nutrition can help with weight loss, which would, can make moving a lot easier and, um, mobility, obviously your overall health a lot better. Meal planning, I talk about planning your day. Planning your meals is helpful as well. To me, meal planning can be stressful. Like, or let me rephrase that. To me, having a meal plan reduces a lot of stress because going throughout the day and thinking, oh, what am I gonna make for dinner tonight? Oh, I don't have anything for dinner tonight. It just keeps popping into my head. And it interrupts my other thoughts and my concentration on other levels. So I'm trying to get like project A done and I can't finish project A because I keep thinking, what am I gonna eat for dinner? Plan your meals in advance and you don't have that interruption that keeps you know, blurting in your ear and pestering you. Huge lifesaver for me. Honestly, that is, that's a big deal for me. And it sounds silly, but what I do, personally what I do, is because I don't like to plan. I either have a book or a planner taken care of, so it's like, oh, here's a, a meal plan for the week. So I know where in the cookbook I'm going. I will hand the cookbook to my husband and say, hey, you have to pick out pick up dinner for, for the week. So he goes through and he lines out what he wants, and then we get the groceries on the weekend. Um, so I get the groceries in for the week, and then we we have it planned for the week. And yeah, just like anything else, even though I have it planned, some days they'll, somebody will throw a wrench in it and I have to adjust, but that's okay because I can stick to, I can like fall back on it on another day or use that for uh, lunch or breakfast for another day. So, but yeah, pre-planning meals is a huge lifesaver for me. I don't know why that is so stressful, but I don't like to think about it. I love to cook and I love to eat, 
but I don't like to think about what is it that I'm going to make. Uh, NSDQ160 says, I am super paranoid about blood clots for whatever reason, so I can make sure that I get rid of, get out and move as much as I can. Exactly. I have my watch sits in, uh, rings me when I'm sitting still too long, so I'm sitting still too long. I'll, I'll move around a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, I, I agree. Blood clots can be dangerous. And, it, you know, with a truck driver, it, it can be common. So that is another thing that you want to be aware of. Mobility stretches are fantastic. And what, I think, is it next week? I got to look. So, no, on the 20, the week of the 25th, we'll be talking about some mobility exercises, giving you additional mobility exercises. But there is a, there is a website, uh, is it Trucker Nutrition? Gives a lot of different exercises for you. Um, plus, if you have a subscription, there's there are a lot of Snap Fitnesses, a lot of Access Fitnesses, 24-hour um, Fitnesses that are available through some of the truck stops out on the road. But just finding nature in general, finding a park, doing a whole bunch of burpees, and there are a lot of variations of burpees, if you guys are familiar with those. Um, burpee is just... Um, jumping up in the air and then coming back down into a squat, putting your hands down into a plank position so your feet kick back out so your, stand, your body is in a plank and then um, doing a push up and then jumping your feet back into your hands, standing into a squat up to a jump squat. Now that is a full on, full burpee. Um, or man hater come for some, I think everybody calls it a little bit different, but that's, those are full on burpees. But there's a lot of variations. You can do a half burpee where you sit in a plank, you're laying in a plank or standing in a plank or what is, what is that, Sat, sitting, standing? <laughs> you're in a plank position and you're jumping your legs in and out into a squat like a frog and out to the plank position and back and forth. That's a half plank, um, just holding the plank itself, or excuse me, that's a half burpee, holding the plank itself doing a, a walking plank, a walking burpee. So going from a standing position, walking yourself or s squatting down, putting your hands on the floor and walking your feet out to a plank instead of jumping out and then walking your feet back. That stretches your calves, it stretches your quads, it stretches your shoulders and your arms as well. And when you walk your way out and then walking your way, walking yourself back in. So that's going to help stretch and give you additional mobility as well as increase your cardiovascular. So a burpee, yeah, the burpee, a giant, a squat thrust with an additional stand between rep is a full body exercise used in strength training as an aerobic exercise. There you go. See, Anna's on it. Never fear. She's always got me covered. And that's great. But I agree. Um, blood clots can be dangerous and you want to keep moving. Um, I know when I'm, if I've been sitting a lot, that's, that is a fear for me too. And I am, I don't know why, but it's almost like in, in my head, it's like, oh, I can feel it. I can feel it. I got to start moving. Um, what kind of exercises can I do? Pilates is a fantastic exercise and I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're male or female. Pilates is a good workout. Yoga is a fantastic workout. I hate it personally, but that's because it's so hard for me. It's hard for me to hold my arms up like this for, you know, for 60 seconds and making sure that my uh, shoulder blades are trying to touch. You know, that my shoulders get tired. Um, and I would way rather do some CrossFit exercises than, and then sit there and, and hold those. But it's very good for you. It is very good for you. And you'll see that some of the, the best shoulders that you, that are out there are from people who do yoga on a regular basis. So Amy, we're talking about some physical fitness as well. Um, but sleep is important. Physical fitness is important for mobility. And I just 100% agree. Avoid getting any of those blood clots or even close to it. So keep your body moving when you can. Um, tapping your feet to the music when you're going. Uh, we have automatic trucks, so you've got the, you've got the option. You've got the ability to do that. Uh, to move. 
Jumping jacks are great. Not everybody's knees can handle jumping jacks. Um, an easy way to, or an easy off is just, you know, stepping out. Stepping your foot out, you can't see me, but moving your arms still. Uh, Michael says, what fruit do you think can kick the furthest? What fruit? Um, hmm. What fruit? <laughs> I don't know. Could it be pineapple? I don't know. Shoots like a football. <laughs> Mango. I don't know, but get some exercise. Um, go to a park, see if there's others playing frisbee or um, frisbee golf. There's frisbee golf out there in a lot of places. Um, geocaching and and going to explore new things. Those are all things that can get you up and moving and get the blood flowing. All good things. So, yep, we're talking about health and fitness. Health and wellness for truck drivers, I guess, this week. So, um, this month. So make sure that you're, you're tuning in. According to the Sleep Association, sleep deprivation can lead to all kinds of consequences. Many consequences, they say. Uh, with an inadequate amount of sleep, our minds and our bodies, they're unable to perform at peak performance. And they, there are several potential bad outcomes that are associated with inadequate sleep. Sleep influences the immune system. And with COVID being out there and with the second string going out there, it's very important to make sure that your immune system is up and that you're getting the right vitamins. Um, memory consolidation. Um, attention, hunger, mood. If you are cranky, odds are you're not getting enough sleep or you're not getting the right nutrition. It's called hangry. <laughs> uh, response time, if your response time is slow or, or uh, really prolonged, then you know that you're not getting enough sleep. A lot of other body functions. It is, it's important and really what can cause sleep deprivation um, is stress. So find whatever it is that's stressing you out and get rid of it. Easy said, huh? <laughs> but find something that uh, will help reduce the stress. Find a hobby. Um, stress can be, it can be caused by your family, your work, your relationships, your personal health. Um, and it, it occurs in pretty much everybody. And it, we just all deal with it a little bit differently. If you're struggling to deal with it, that's where the EAP program comes in. So unum.com backslash life balance. Um, it's free to all of our drivers, their families, their um, extended families. It's 800-854-1446. So it's important to manage your stress levels and um, you, you can do that through, through small, simple lifestyle changes if need be. Meditation is another thing that a lot of people use to manage their stress. Meditation, anybody else struggle with meditation? Just the idea is like, ah, stand, sitting there quiet for three minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, Whew, that's rough. Brian says, it would be nice if your recruiting department would return calls instead of leaving people hanging. Sure, Brian, um, I can give you a call. Um, Brian, I will give you a call as soon as, uh, as, soon as this is over. Or, or Anna will, one of the two, but we will take care of this. As soon as, so in about 10, 15 minutes or so. All right? All right. Yeah, a large percentage of people report that they're stressed out and they're like, we're stressed out all the time. So you've gotta find something that helps to reduce that stress. And Unum can help, help you find that hobby if you need be. They're, they're there for you in a lot of ways. Get a good night's sleep. Start your day off right. <laughs> so, what is it that you're looking to do without within your day? So, are you guys looking for um, different driving positions? Are you looking for over the road? Are you looking for something regional? Um, what did you guys have in mind? You know, what would make what would make your day less stressful um, if you were looking for a job? Because you know, work is a lot, is stressful for a lot of people. That creates the stress and that can provide that sleep deprivation. So if you were out there looking for a position, what would it be that you're looking for? 
We have something at home, Amy says. We, have, we do have some uh, regional positions in the Midwest. We have a local position out of Bessemer, Alabama. It's a flatbed position and does require one year of flatbed experience. So steel beams, coils, sheetrock, um, all those things that, that, would, that would help you out. Um, so that is the that is the local position out of Bessemer. It's a Monday through Friday position, and then um, every once in a while you might have a Saturday, but it's usually just Monday through Friday, and um, starts at 7 a.m. So if you're interested in that, just like any of the positions, you can call our number right here, 888-668-0698 for more details. We'll give you more details on that. Along with the benefits and the pay, we guarantee a minimum of $1,000 a week in our uh, refrigerated van and flatbed divisions. Of course, there are some runs that are more regional that do offer a little bit more pay. Um, it's $12.50 a week if you're looking for a Midwest refrigerated out of huh, the Midwest. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, if you live anywhere, like if you live in Kansas City, awesome. It's a great area for the Midwest refrigerated guaranteed pay of $12.50 a week. Uh, if you live along I-80 from Omaha to Chicago, uh, anywhere along there or within 30 miles of that route, um, you'd be in a good spot for us. If you live in Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis to uh, Chicago, Long I-90, that's a great area for us as well for that Midwest Guaranteed Pay uh, Refrigerated Divisions, twelve fifty a week. would be a good opportunity for you. There currently is a $5,000 sign-on bonus that's paid out quarterly. It pays twelve fifty dollars each quarter, so it pays out within that first year. Plus, if you run over 25,000 miles for the quarter, you get an extra five cents a mile on all the miles that you ran above that 25. And then we have, of course, our, our Midwest refrigerated um, and our over the road refrigerated. It does guarantee at least $1,000 a week. Now that thousand is more of a fallback in the, in the minimum pay divisions where it's like if you're over the road, because you're looking at your pay per mile, which is based off of your experience, your pay per mile, and uh, the miles that you're running, you're most likely going to exceed that thousand quite a bit um, based off of our any of our averages so if you're looking at 2600 miles a week or if you're looking over the road where you're at 28 plus miles a week 2800 or or more miles a week you're, you're gonna be making you know probably 1300 or so on a regular basis um, then we have our midwest flatbed our midwest flatbed can get you home on a weekly basis as well guaranteed pay of 1450 a week in most locations uh, we do have a guarantee of a thousand as well depending on where you live it's that's the important part if you're wondering about what we have in your area the best thing to do is put your zip code into the chat or to call us at 888-668-0698 and we can call you with with uh more details based off of where you live, be a little more specific. And then of course, based off of your experience, we can give you um, more specifics on your pay as well. And then we have our over the road flatbed based out of Bessemer, Alabama, which is, that one will get you home about every, well, depending on where you live. If you live in Alabama, Northern Alabama, Northern Georgia, um, or even Savannah, Georgia, if you live, um, in North Carolina, if you live west of I-95 in North Carolina, we can get you home on a weekly basis in all of those locations. Otherwise, from Texas to the Carolinas, the most part anywhere over there, you're looking at every other weekend for home time uh, for our flatbed. It does require a minimum of nine months of tractor trailer flatbed experience. It does need to be flatbed. Um, and then we can keep you up to date on that and get you rolling. So if you're wondering if you qualify, please give us a call at 888-668-0698 for more details. Okay, excellent. Um, any other questions on the positions that we have? Oh, Anna had put on here too, we do have a home weekly. If you live in the Chicago area, like within 50 miles of Chicago, we have a home weekly, pay $1,700. Um, there are a lot of short runs, pay $1,700 per week, so that's guaranteed. And again, for the guaranteed or that minimum pay requirements, the qualifications, you need to run a minimum, or excuse me, you have to be available a minimum of five days out of the week. Um, no driver service failures, so no late loads. Get your paperwork in by Sunday night at 10 p.m., that's a must, and you have the transfer apps available that you can uh, 
uh, get that information in through the transfer app. We have onboard scanners in the truck, you know, to get all of that there. Um, let's see, so be available for dispatch at least five days out of the week, get your paperwork in, no late, serve, no late loads, no CSA viol violations, no preventable accidents, and uh, no load refusals for the week. And that goes on a week by week basis. So as long as you're doing that, you'll have at least the minimum, if nothing else, <laughs> if not more. So. All right. Next week, we will be talking a little bit more about the bonuses, uh, the bonuses, the extra pays. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And then we'll go over some health strategies as well. We're going to focus on health a lot um, this month. So health and wellness and the importance of it for our truck drivers to keep you guys safe and healthy and healthy, wealthy, and wise. So all of the above, right? <laughs> all right. Well, I look forward to visiting with you guys next week, next Monday on our Facebook channel, facebook.com backslash DTL Inc. We'll be there at 4 p.m. Central. And then Tuesday, we'll be right back here on our YouTube channel at noon Central. So we'll see you then. And Brian will give you a call here in just a moment. All right. Thanks, you guys, for joining me. Again, if you have any questions and you're watching the replay, please put the zip code or your question in the chat or in the comments so that I can answer them as they come in. Thanks, you guys. You have a wonderful rest of your day and into the rest of the week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>